my friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you doing? Are you glad? It's Friday. I'm pretty glad about it. <laughs> I am glad about it. How about you? Uh, so you made it through another week and God has been good. He has been good to us indeed. And we're grateful to come to this point, this rest and this stopping point in our week. And ask the Lord to refresh us through his word, because that's what we do here at the rest stop. We read the word of God, we ponder the word of God, and we rest and we stop and we ask the spirit of the Lord to give us revelation. So as has been our practice, we are in the lectionary. We'll read from the lectionary. And today we have an interesting verse of scripture. We're in the 26th week of ordinary time. Um, we have an interesting verse of scripture because this is normally read during the season of Purim. And uh, on the Jewish calendar, we just came out of the season of Sukkot this past Monday, this week, Monday at sundown was the end of seven days of the Feast of Tabernacle, where um, our Jewish brothers and sisters are reminded of God dwelling with them as they dwelled in the wilderness. Um, and so it's really like the dwelling place. I love that. I love that. I do. Uh, but this verse of scripture, chapter, or actually book, is usually read during the season of Purim. And, um, and so today we have some select verses. So here it is. It is Esther, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6 verses 9 and 10, and then it picks up in chapter 9 and goes verses 20 through 22, okay? So Esther chapter 7, 1 through 6, 9 and 10, then 9, 20, 21, 22, okay? And it reads thusly. So the king and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Asherus said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe, an enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs, in attendance on the king said, look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose words saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Asherah, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar and also the 15th day of the same month year by year. As the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned 
for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Wow, so we have a story here that many of you are familiar with. We're all familiar with this story. And there were some select verses there, so it may feel a little disjointed, but. Um, but you know the story, right? So you've got this story of um, Haman, who was very jealous of Mordecai, and he was doing his best to get Mordecai killed. Um, and uh, and it kind of turned around on him, right? So the lies and the, the anger that he harbored for Mordecai, um, unfortunately, worked against him. And so he had prepared for for Mordecai to be killed, and he was trying to persuade the king, um, but uh, that turned. Um, and 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 don't forget that Queen Esther she she gave a request because her people, the Jewish people, um, word of it came that they were going to be annihilated, and so she she fasted, and she um, and they fasted. Uh, and Mordecai asked her to, and she fasted along with her, her um, servants. They fasted, they all fasted and prayed, and then she went before the king, and he uh, granted her her request, right? So the favor of the Lord uh, was with her. Now we know in the book of Esther, I believe, now you might have to search it out. I'm just coming out of my brainy here, so you might have to search it out just a little bit, but uh, the Lord is not mentioned in the book, I believe. Just test me on that. Um, however, the implications and the understanding that God is with them uh, and God is for them uh, is, is very present in the book. So he, although not mentioned, his presence is there. And so this is a, one that is celebrated. And I, I believe that when it's read... I. I've never been there to hear it read during these high holy days. And as I mentioned, Purim, which this year was in February. Um, but I believe that as it's being read, sometimes it's dramatized and people boom and they hiss. And, and, and that wife, right? Haman's wife. Ugh, she was a mess, right? She was a mess. I'm not even going to call her by name. <laughs> uh is on the tip of my tongue and right here on my teeth, but I'm not even going to call her by name. She was a mess. She really was. Um, so, and, and all of this kind of mess and what she was planting in her husband's head uh, really was a part of leading to his downfall. So what do we say about this? What do we say? What are the questions that we ask of the Lord? Of course, when we read this, we, we see the favor of the Lord. And we like to highlight that, how God is favorable. But uh, there's so many questions. May maybe the question is, who are you listening to? <laughs> Who's in your head? Right? Um, and so we want to make sure that we have, we, we, those things, people who are in our ear, those thoughts that are in our ears, um, inner ears, in our ears, in the inner part that gets down into the heart. We just need to ask the Lord to, um, to, to remove those voices and those thoughts and those people from us. I have them as well. Not necessarily personified as a person, but sometimes even in myself, I have doubts and I, and I, Put myself in a place where um, it's hard to come to overcome, but we are overcomers, and the Lord is with us, right? So, so that maybe that is the question: who are, who are we listening to? Maybe another question is um, uh, when it comes to Esther: um, where where does our courage and our strength come from? Uh, she fasted. She went before the king. Now, he had to extend the royal scepter, right? He had to extend 
and bid her come. Um, but this is where we get, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. So where, where does our courage come from, right? Where does our courage come from? And um, poor Haman, I, I, he's just a mess. He, he was so insecure, right? So what, what are the insecurities that we carry that makes us all crazy and even wicked? Um, because the insecurities are those things that push us and drive us. So we want to ask the Lord to free us from those things. I'm looking here. Um, of course, oh, the feast. Feasting, right? So we, we want to feast on the Lord. Um, maybe we'll rest and stop in that. So, so it goes over into the, the ninth chapter, right? And it says, Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in the provinces and of King Asherus. Um, and I believe other recordings, he's Xerxes as well, right? Um, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and also the 15th day of the same month year by year. And here it is, as the days of on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness from morning into a holiday, right? And I'll say a holy day, right? That they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. My friends, here we are, it's feasting time, right? It's feasting time, uh, it's fall, harvest. It's the time when we think about gathering with our friends and our families. And then we do think about those who are less fortunate than us. And we send um, gifts to people's homes. We, we're going to gather in a few weeks um, to celebrate thanks and give thanks. So it's feasting time. It's time for us to move from a place of sorrow to a place of gladness because it's harvest time. And so that's where I'm going to rest and stop. And maybe the thought is, Lord, what is it that you are birthing in me? What fresh fruit is there that others can glean from and gather? That's where I'll rest and I'll stop. All right, we're talking about the favor of the Lord. Lord, I met an Esther this week, actually, <laughs> um, and, and, and we're talking about the favor of the Lord. Lord, help us, right? Help us uh, to gain favor from those who surround us. And then also, Lord, that we may be able to extend greatness um, to them and gladness to them and, and be a help to them as well. I'm thinking of people who are still suffering um, from the floods a couple of weeks ago. We, we, we still have people who are, who are suffering the ramifications of that, but how can we, even out of our abundance, be a blessing to others? Because that is the season that we're in. All right, so it is harvest time, and it is also time to feast. Feast on the word of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Another verse in the lectionary this week really talks about the, the manna from heaven, God providing the manna. So we thank God for all of his provision. Amen. All right, let's rest and let's stop together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for these select verses from uh, the book of Esther, Queen Esther. And um, we can remember your 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 blessings toward her, your favor toward her, and not just her, her entire peoples, Lord, those whom she loves. And so, Lord, we thank you, those whom she cared for, Lord, and even her uncle, Father. So we thank you and we praise you for this book. And we thank you for the lessons that we can glean. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So in the background, you hear my sister just came into the house. So we thank God for her. 
um, and that she's had a wonderful day. I pray. But I'm going to catch up with her and see if she did. But until then, next time we will all see you all at the next restaurant. Bye.